Good day, y'all. Welcome to day three of the Overwatch League Summer Qualifiers. Three matches today, all Overwatch League versus Contenders teams, Rose. Fun day, or I guess fun night ahead of us. Oh yeah, I am so stoked about this one, especially because the first two days of this week of Summer Qualifiers have really delivered. I feel like we've seen a lot of roster shakeups that have revitalized a lot of these teams, and we're seeing brand new looks from everybody. Yeah, especially like a team like O2 Blast, no matter how many iterations, how many rosters they produce, they've all They're been so successful. <laughs> <laughs> They're all so good. Um, but for anyone joining us for the first time for the, eight, um, the uh, summer qualifiers, all of these teams are making those knockouts. It's rather but the seeding and who faces who. Yeah, that seeding's going to be so important, especially when you end up taking a look ahead towards the playoffs that are going to be coming up, actually, in just a few months' time. I feel like we just started the season yesterday, and we're already thinking about playoffs? <laughs> I can't believe it. I know. Just the season, the year has gone by so fast. It's already summer. We're already halfway done the year. Um, six OWL teams this time around are joined by four of the top contenders teams from Knockout. So it's exciting just to see them face off where this is day three and no contenders teams have taken a dub yet. I believe except Dreamers uh, against Shanghai, which that was really exciting. That was super, super exciting. You take a look at Dreamers, a team that ended up making a few roster changes, even just be from in between the stages when we ended up seeing them in the East knockouts uh, before the midseason and now taking a look to what they look like now. And yeah, I think that when you look at just the power level of this team, it's a little surprising with those roster changes. They were able to take down Shanghai Dragons. That was kind of nuts. Yeah, just the fact that Dreamers went from the sixth seed in Korea in the spring stage where everyone cared more about O2 Blast, SPG, um, and other teams. Like, Dreamers was not on everyone's radar. And then they were upsetting teams left and right, even beating SPG, going further than anyone would have ever thought. And it just had a nice narrative, right, with the name of Dreamers. And even with this new iteration of the roster, you know, congratulations to all the players of contenders that moved up and got promoted to the Overwatch League. Even leave yet. Yesterday from the Spark said the number one team that contenders uh, from contenders he's worried about is Dreamers. But we have a special announcement in case y'all missed it. The Overwatch League Finals has been announced. Let's look at that uh, video when it's ready. Back to back the Shanghai Dragon Overwatch League champion, the Dallas Fuel, take their place amongst the stars. Witness the crowning of the Overwatch League champions, live in Toronto. To be the best, you have to beat the best. Are you in? Yo, I'm in. 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 So in. I'm in. I'm definitely in. Today, anything is possible. They spit on the power rankings. Let him Cock. This Grand Finals is going to be so fun to watch. The Overwatch League Grand Finals, live in Toronto, September 28th to October 1st. Cannot believe that the Grand Finals have been announced so far, and we are heading back to Toronto, Canada, which was the stop that we had in the midseason. Just taking a look at that last season of the Overwatch League, and Jen, it's going to be a great time. Toronto was amazing. It was, and I hope that APAC can send some of the best. Um, we have to get through knockouts. So obviously all the teams from qualifiers get to knockouts, which join the top two teams from the opens. And we hope that APAC are just going to have a stronger showing. I know spring stage was was wobbly. Spark and Soul uh, tried to do their best to represent. You know, speaking of those teams, we'll see them today where everyone does look much more improved from last stage. Oh, absolutely. I feel like everybody ended up taking the midseason break to heart, ended up putting their nose to the grindstone, and ended up coming back with some brand new strategies that really helped to enable the best uh, aspects of each team. And so that's why I was so excited to get a chance to look at this very first week of qualifiers, because, yeah, every team really feels like they're showing up in the biggest way. 
Absolutely. And if you are a fan joining us from the APAC Open, the rules are pretty similar. You know, best of five. Everyone's mostly playing each other. Tons of matches to determine the seeding going into knockouts. Except instead of the loser picking maps, it's all predetermined. So we've seen a kind of a lot of one-sided series lately uh, due to just losers not being able to pick their best map and really just having to prepare for what's in store for them. And that sometimes doesn't favor the best composition that these teams may have in their back pocket and so we have seen a few teams kind of become the victim of that when you look at maybe they're just not as strong of a dive team as their opponent or they would really love to be able to play the Ramatra brawl and just really not afforded the opportunity to do so maybe today a little bit different for some of these teams yeah, I think every team in APAC now has been able to play a match. So rankings-wise, Dreamers is the only contenders team that's been able to win a match. Uh, even O2, Panthera, Poker Face, especially Poker Face, where recasted yesterday, had a hard time. But then there's teams like Dallas Fuel, who found themselves in the middle of the pack um, last uh, stage in the shadow of teams like Soul, Spark, and Charge. Dallas Fuel talked about the improvements they're making, and I'm so excited to see where they'll end up at the end of their journey speaking of that journey you kind of see visually what that looks like yeah we're right in the middle of the summer stage right now and then we're going to be fast forwarding very quickly towards the play-ins and the playoffs all leading up to the grand finals that will be in toronto so excited about that announcement still I know we're all in. I know we have to. We all film like some goofy, like I'm in. I spent so many iterations. I love yours where you're like on the phone, like in the middle of your walk. You're the only one who touched grass for that video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Sometimes you have to, right? We could try to touch grass in any of these maps of the Overwatch League, but nothing beats maybe sometimes going outside. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Uh I definitely need to work on my tan. As the teams have to work on these maps, it's uh, very, very different. I almost forgot how some of these maps work. It's been so long. Things like Gibraltar have really tested these dive teams. I know uh, everyone was obsessed with King's Row to really show the masterclass of Rush. Now there's different hybrid options there. And of course, our three push maps haven't changed, but we've seen a little bit of Coliseo now. Uh, well, I think one new Queen Street yesterday, but the favorite has been Esperanza. It really has been, and I think that just ends up speaking to a lot of these teams wanting to focus down on the dive mechanics that they have been able to perfect over so many weeks and so many seasons when you take a look at who is actually playing in the Eastern League. But as you mentioned, Jen, everybody's played a match so far, and this is how the standings have shaken out up till this point. Uh, everyone coming out the gate swinging, I think the only uncharacteristic thing is charge losing to spark yesterday we had the showdown and it didn't deliver the, the hype and excitement that maybe game five i was predicting where spark put charge to bed after uh, charge had said spark always peak against them and that same spark got smashed by the soul infernal in their very first match so all the spark fans know that they're a fun team to cheer for but they don't deliver those consistent results to, like show uh, demonstrating the skills that they've had I hope that we see them continue that success they were able to get against the Guangzhou Charge. I feel like when you go up against the Soul Infernal, I really worry about a team like Poker Face that has to do that today because of how dominant Soul Infernal has really been. Taking a look at even just the first half of the season, they earned their way into the midseason flawlessly. And then, uh, unfortunately, just ended up not getting the right matchups for them, taking a look at the midseason tournament bracket. But we're going to be heading into our very first match, Dallas Fuel versus O2 Blast. So let's go ahead and check out the Dallas Fuel.
Overwatch League champions of the Overwatch League champions of Dallas 201 have returned to that former glory. Now without Fearless, but with Hanbin, where yesterday the dude was like primaling just the flex on his opponents. Dallas will look like they had an amazing time yesterday. They really did. I mean, <laughs> I think back to the Eichenvolda match, and that was where Hanbin really was kind of going ham using that primal rage to strike fear into the opponent's <laughs> eyes, just bouncing up and down on the bridge. No reason to pull the primal there either, just an ego primal. Oh, Sparkle's like yawning. Come on, man, wake up. I remember MC <laughs> oh, MCD's putting eye drops in. He's ready to not blink for the rest of the match. We got some so cute fan signs in the crowd live at WDG Esports Studio in Korea. Um, these are online matches, but the very last one will actually be on land for the Dreamers vs. Panthera. They're going to be playing live on stage, so I know this is going to be a packed crowd later. Absolutely. You've got to come in and support the contenders teams that have earned their way to be able to play in the summer qualifiers, and hopefully they're able to deliver a banger to be able to close out the day. Well, let's talk about O2 Blast, Dallas Fuel's opponents for this first match that we have, and... I feel like O2 Blast is one of those teams, you talked about it, Jen, you can't underestimate them. Even if they're going to be going through multiple iterations of their roster, this has been one of the most successful Korean contenders teams in terms of how many players they have promoted into the Overwatch League. Absolutely. This is like the, gra the graduating class of O2 Blast. They have put uh, sent Knife and Irony to the Vegas Eternal, Opener to the Toronto Defiant, Marvel to LA Gladiators, Top Dragon actually went to Dreamers, but O2 Blast is the team you want to be on. Every player in APAC wants to be on O2 Blast. The two names you're going to recognize the most, Prophet, or uh, formerly known as PH when he was with other Prophet <laughs> on that Soul Dynasty roster, got released, wants to prove that he deserves to be back on that hour roster. And Who Are You, that flex player, um, actually was a teammate of Protect on Min Shark in Contenders uh, Korea, but a former Shanghai Dragons player. Oh, I love this. I'll get back to that point, but I really want to appreciate some of these fan signs that we have. This is red water and blue fire. Really speaking to the matchup that we have today, does water have the super effective nature against the fire today? I feel like it has to when you look at this matchup. Oh yeah, I was like, water? O2 is like oxygen. I guess if you add the H2O, we can make a, a case for water at the <laughs> red versus blue this is a clash on both colors players but also experience where there are a lot of players on o2 blast that don't have as much experience right profit and who are you are the only former overwatch league players We're gonna have bliss face off against search today where search is a main support was on mdy who got second in contenders korea started competing only in 2021 and bliss it's quite the resume Bliss not even has the resume, but also has the experience and just the record to be able to back that up, right? Remember yesterday when Bliss was going absolutely wild <laughs> on Li Shang? Just so many boops on the Lucio, and then being able to turn it back over to playing the Brigitte a little bit later on in the match. Those whip shots and those shield bashes were so effective to be able to deal with the Sombra and the Tracer. I just noticed like almost 10 knockback kills per 10 minutes. So every minute he's knocking somebody down. Watch out for Blizz. He is enemy number one. But maybe you won't have to worry about this as much on our first predetermined map of Oasis. I'm expecting the, uh, well, the dive mirror. But Protect has opted a lot more for the D.Va as that classic off tank player. I think that's something that you have to look at when you take a peek at how O2 Blast ended up approaching their Guangzhou Charge matchup. They didn't really want to play the Winston Mirror. It does speak to Protect having a bit more experience with the D.Va and being able to run that as a part of the dive composition instead. But even taking a look at how they ended up trying to play some of these other more control-oriented maps like Control and Push, was the Ramatra. It was just a straight up rush composition coming out from them. I feel like you can play that sometimes in Oasis, maybe getting a look to see that on maybe University, but Gardens, I would expect a little bit more of that dive, like you said. Yeah, 
Dallas Fuel have been known as those rush superstars for the longest time. They they love that. Remember that Zarya from Hanbin? That was their bread and butter. That was the meta that they had the most successful results in. So University would definitely be the round that they prefer to the most as a pause is being called from the um, O2 Blast side of things. I gotta remember not to say the contenders part. <laughs> I read from left <laughs> to right, okay? Um, but yeah, expecting the dive here where Diva in a vacuum is that counter to Winston. As soon as you step inside the bubble, you can bully the Winston out of it, which if you can't use the bubble, well, you can't hold the space. And especially when you're going to play a little bit more reactively, if that Winston puts down that bubble, that's a great way to be able to abuse the fact that those cooldowns are offline. Maybe they jumped in. Maybe the jump isn't available for them to get away. So I do love that approach of being able to see the D.Va go toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like the Winston. And especially if you don't feel confident in the mirror, you got to take advantage of everything that you get. And I feel like the D.Va ends up actually supporting uh, Prophet and who are used hero pools just a little bit better as well when Prophet wants to be able to play more of those long-range hit scans. And speaking of those long-range hit scans, Profit, where he can regain the name of Profit instead of PH, where my science degree is just excited to say PH all the time. <laughs> but Profit, I feel like really stepped up for that Soul Dynasty roster, and I was actually a big fan of him and was almost perplexed why he would get dropped, or I don't know what the story was, but he finds himself back into contenders where... People like Who Are You and Profit shouldn't be here. I've been casting Who Are You since he's like 14 years old. He's now 21. He's grown up so much as both a person and a player. Really has. I love being able to see those stories unfold for a lot of these contenders players as they end up graduating into the Overwatch League. To speak really quickly on the point of Prophet getting released from Soul Dynasty, they trimmed down their roster significantly. They only have five players now, and so uh, to be able to kind of fill everything out, unfortunately something has to go, right? Well, the starting five will need as much time together as possible. I know O2 Blast have been cycling their compositions a lot, uh, at least from the first match we did see from them. For now, macro-wise, Dallas Hill controlling the middle of the point while O2 Blast have their flankers trying to take angles around them, but overstaying their welcome. Sparkle comes from behind, backhands Profit. You got a 5v4 for Dallas Fuel as soon as they had that mid control. Now their flankers have free roam to try and go after this backline. O2 Blast thought they were safe on the highway side of things. Hanbin, though, is very low, and he's almost healed back up nonetheless. O2 Blast are the ones who don't have resources with those healers gone, and Fuel will take the first fight. Easy first capture there for the Dallas Fuel. The call out onto the backline made it difficult for O2 Blast to be able to sustain themselves through all of that fire pressure in the backline. But more importantly, Dallas Fuel get a chance to set up this Sombra. Edison has absolute free reign over the health packs here, and that could really help out with any of the Tracer versus Tracer or the Sombra versus Sombra. Oh, good reaction by Prophet to translocate while not paying attention. You should be able to try and dodge the hacks from Edison better than the anti that hit O2 Blast. Force them to cower on that highway side. They'll have access to the Mega. They have good protection there. But they also want to re-emerge and try to flip this point. It's 50% for Dallas Fuel. EMP hits those supports as soon as O2 wanted to take a fight. They left that back line unprotected. That's the moment where Edison struck and it worked out. They got gold. Protect won't even be able to get back into mechs. So it's just self-destruct. Didn't get a kill. Didn't get him a second life. And it's not going to help O2 at all. At the very least, you could take a look at O2 Blast having that EAP online themselves now as Prophet is going to be able to work up to that one as well. And so hopefully they're able to get Bliss in the backline before that rally ends up being popped. This is going to be O2 Blast's last and best uh -oh. chance to be able to get back into this. Oh, he hits Bliss and look at that coordination with Who Are You. MCD hits a random shot and Who Are You was already slept or uh, already low speaking of being <laughs> slept. Beautiful job by MCD, your player of the match yesterday for the Dallas Fuel is already on fire, 94% plus, with a leftover ult to spare for the fuel, a rally in the bank, O2 Blast have some leftover ult too, the nano on the search, as that will substitute tank while Protect comes back from spawn as the Doom Fist will have the brig off, Bliss versus Search, as O2 Blast are just playing their life, they don't want to fight until Protect gets back, speaking of which, there's that Doom Fist. 
Oh, we got Sparkle working up to a post bomb though. This might be able to seal the deal for the Dallas Fuel as they're working in overtime. They said to Blast bought enough time that they have their full five stack back. Both by Sparkle hits Karu and the EMP will seal the deal as you said for the Dallas Fuel round number one, a hundred to zero. What a statement. That is a clean way to be able to kick off this series, and I feel like it only gets harder here for O2 Blast. You talked about how Hanbin ends up being able to play these off tanks beautifully. So if you wanted to play a little bit more of that brawl as we head over to our next round, you can absolutely do that. But oh, I gotta talk about this EMP, the sleep, the... <laughs> oh my god. Nasty. <laughs> Kinda dealt with those flankers by himself, and we talked about the power of the support line of Dallas Fuel. The way that you don't have to worry about MCD and Bliss, or you could take your time coming back. It's not a total emergency if MCD hits sleeps and antis like that. No, it's not. And I mean, when you also have Bliss being able to bolster everything up with the rally as well, it finds so much time for the teams to be able to get there. Uh, we're gonna end up seeing the dive though from Dallas Fuel. They don't want to end up playing this rush mirror as I would have expected coming out from O2 Blast. So maybe they've got another plan up their sleeve. High ground control here for Dallas. I can see Dallas Fuel swapping off of this if they don't win the first fight, but Sparkle emerges, gets gets all the attention from O2 Blast. Wasn't coordinated with Edison or Hanbin on the dive, so 4v5. Dallas Fuel want to respect that space. Not wanting to lose anybody else while not giving up too much space either. Standing at the door, reacting to any MCD anti nays, which, speaking of which, he's on that coast side along with one of his DPS. Sparkle returns on the Echo. That's how they want to burn down this Ramatra, who's going to be mostly unprotected against this large amount of birds. Yeah, just go ahead and fly behind the shield that Protect is going to be laying down, and then you're able to get that great focus beam pressure onto the Ramatra. The anti, though, I don't know if these uh, backliners for O2 Blast are long for this world. <laughs> O2 Blast are still just fighting through this, but they jump right into the loving arms of an EMP placed by Edison in the middle of the point. And as that initial damage of EMP went off, it synergized as well with the focusing beam of Spark who fit and finished off two targets and ended up getting the point back for fuel. And also getting the duplicate online for this next fight. Sparkle's going to be able to use this to either end up maybe breaking down a May. There's just so many great targets for on O2 Blast for Sparkle to be able to choose for this dupe. But it's going to be an EMP that Dallas will have to contend with first. Oh, uh, nice timing from Profit. He waited for Blizz to join MCD's side where originally they were split. They were LOS from each other, one in mini room. And removing those two healers should be a fight win for O2 Blast, especially when you're also committing the Ant Matrix. But Fuel, they think this is winnable. Sparkle goes for Dupe, buys himself another life, and Hanbin's Primal obviously didn't sustain him enough, so O2 Blast will cap the point back. Sparkle might be thinking about switching here. I would at this point. Dallas Fuel haven't really been able to find the dominance on this map with the dive composition as they did on City Center. And so taking a look, especially when O2 Blast has ult economy and spades, they're walking into a very tough situation. Dallas are going to have to contend with a ton of ult spears. Or you just into down main to throw a blizzard down and just forgot about the button push. The sound beer from Surge should have came out earlier if they wanted to do that tempo push. Now the cap for fuel. Bliss is missing. MCD has the nano. If the fuel believe this fight is turnable, they'll give this to Hanbin or someone like Sparkle, but the point right back in the hands of O2. Edison just uh, capped while O2 Blast was AFK at that point. Uh, <laughs> at least they're able to get the point back, but for how much longer? Great assassination from Sparkle to take care of Karu. Now the bulk of healing is gone and protect is a built victim. And who are you? Drops the blizzard and it gets canceled. Two failed attempts. And uh, it's starting to maybe run out of time. You take a look at Prophet having the EMP online, but Edison is waiting for a spawn camp EMP. <laughs> Oh no, I, I just see this going <laughs> disastrously for O2 Blast as they end up going in, but when Prophet has the EMP as well, it's about EMP versus EMP, who can use it later, find more value. It looks like Prophet's hitting the trigger first. 
Yeah, Addison kind of took too long to figure that out. Prophet hits his first deal with Hanbin. Addison responds as O2 Blast converge together. And Addison just got more value. And Sparkle gets the shine. He's on the dupe of the Ramatra. He's beat everybody down, almost touching the spawn room doors. And Dallas Fuel stuffed them back where they came from. And with a few more seconds left, Fuel will be taking the second round and the map. But there was a last second touch there from Who Are You to spark that overtime as O2 Blast. They gotta think of something quick. They don't have much left in the tank as well. Maybe end up getting a sound barrier, but Protect is already down. Oh, Sparkle is just farming, and O2 Blast haven't had an answer. This is beautiful coordination from the fuel where I fully expected the rush, but this has been their signature comp for a reason. Dallas Fuel take a commanding game number one. Hanbin showing up on the off tanks, but once again showing us how much work he's been able to put into this Winston to be such a force to be reckoned with. Adele's Fuel, they're starting this series off in such a big way. 100 to 0 on the first round, ended up going the distance there on the second round as well for a flawless victory. O2 Blast though giving them a little trouble there with the rush. Maybe we get a chance to see that look again from them as we take a look at the next map of the series. Yeah, Sparkle's Echo Swap was so smart. It burned down and helped Hanbin win the tank matchup. He got dupes online like crazy. Do O2 Blast have any oxygen left? Well, we'll have to find out after the break.
Alice, you'll take our game number one on Oasis, but what do O2 Blast want to settle on? They're still finding their groove as this new roster that comes together, relying on that experience, that veteranship of someone like Profit and Who Are You. They got fans in the crowd cheering for them, so I hope O2 Blast put on a good show. Hope so they, they, they do too. Feel like they're getting a little bit dizzy when it comes down to what they really want to lock in for these compositions and just some discomfort coming through. Prophet, known so much for those hit scan heroes and not really getting a chance to show that off quite yet. Just leaning into the Sombra and I just feel like it's not working out too well so far. EMP conversion struggling a little bit. But we go to a map where it just exudes confidence for the Dallas Fuel. Our next map is Eichenwald. And if you're a fan of any team that <laughs> faced Fuel yesterday, I'm sorry. Because Hanbin was primaling just to jump and kind of flex at the spawn room doors. Everyone was laughing and having a ball. And besides just the memes, Sparkle had an incredibly high attach rate on Tracer. And that's improved tremendously over the years and months. Sparkle's Tracer was just such a joy to watch. I feel like even in this matchup, looking at the head-to-head -head between Sparkle and Who Are You, Who Are You is definitely struggling a little bit to be able to keep up with that pressure. A lot of that too was just kind of the synergy that Edison and Sparkle have as a duo. They played together last season and are part of the winning roster for the Dallas Fuel. And they get a chance to continue that legacy forward with the five that Dallas Fuel have had. What a tight-knit five it's really been. And 402 Blast has to deal with so many roster changes in the mid-season break. And I heard from, you know, the Dallas Fuel interview with MCD where they are aware that the spring stage didn't go to their expectations. They know they have fans that are cheering them on and that's a lot of pressure on them, but they had a conversation with themselves as players, with the coaches. What are we lacking? What do we need to improve on? And Dallas, you are confident that they have so much more to show. And if that 3-0 beatdown yesterday is just the beginning, holy cow, watch out for the Dallas Fuel this season. Dallas Fuel. Definitely want to try to turn things around into this summer stage. I'm expecting I can build it to definitely go their way and bring us to a match point here. Uh, the onus is really on O2 Blast at this point to try to change things up to be able to get on the board. And I think part of it just starts with leaning more into the dive. I don't I don't think the Diva Summer Tracer looked bad on City Center. I just think after Dallas Fuel got set up, it was really difficult to take them apart. Yeah, the double flanker is especially good at punishing weak back lines. But when you have to go up against MCD and Bliss, y'all saw the replay on City Center. MCD, the C we said yesterday, stands for Chad. The sleeps, the hit on the who are you that killed him. The initial sparkle snipe off the Widow, the life weaver to bring him back to spawn ASAP. But the double flanker from O2 Blast, we'll see if they're, they'll be successful at even killing MCD or Bliss. Uh, you, what do you think the M and the D stand for? I feel like it's like mega chat difference. Yeah, I love that. I said big Chattington, but oh my god, okay, Prophet jumped in the middle of all of that. Big Chattington, that's what I love about him yesterday. He, he truly, and that was so rare for a player of the match to go towards the support. That's how much, and Sparkle was almost pissed, but that, those votes were so close, and Dallas Gull playing so close too. Jumping on O2 Blast as soon as they try to protect that bridge and Fuel have opened the gateways to go towards the point cap. That was such a fast take. Just completely dismantling that defensive setup from O2 Blast. Uh, this is, a, some, is this something that O2 Blast really struggled with in their matchup yesterday uh, when we ended up seeing them play off against the Guangzhou Charge. Actually, day number one, excuse me. But Charge has played such an aggressive game that O2 Blast, even with a re more reactionary style there with the D.Va, just not able to break through that. And Dallas Fuel is another aggressive team. 
Yeah, like Dallas Fuel, like Shanghai Soul, like these are to me beatable teams for like the top level of contenders, or at least that's where the argument is being made. But Fuel, this stage, have looked untouchable. And even in the spring stage, Dallas Fuel didn't lose to contenders, but you thought that middle of the pack was where contenders could start to really surprise them. But for now, Fuel are just taking up so much space. Hanbin is on top of Karu. Let's get anti, but Hanbin has primal, so he can overstay his welcome all he wants. What he wants to do right now is knock his support, not really everyone, off of this top bridge. So they're they're not as safe. Ooh, protect Sog opening in the back line. Maybe this is where O2 Blast are able to take their heels in. Yeah, as soon as O2 Blast got pushed off the bridge, they're like, all right, let's tango. Protect drops down, micro missiles a bunch of people, puts in damage, Hongbin can protect them. And Dallas Shield, though, despite getting reset, they're halfway to beat. They were able to get a little bit of hard push, but I actually feel like this puts Devil's Fuel into a more precarious position. There aren't too many great avenues to be able to get back to the car, especially if it's going to be pushing back just a little bit around this corner. So they're going to have to try to fight in these tiny groups. How is FCD and Bliss staying alive? The rally pop by Bliss He's between a rock and a hard place. Such a tiny room with Protect on one side, the rest of O2 on another. But it was the search rally that double stunned MCD and Bliss that, well, lined up the dominoes for O2 Blast to knock them all down. Protect won't be able to get back into mech again. Sparkle has made sure to mark that baby diva, and Protect failed to do that again on uh, on Oasis. The self destruct's not getting value, and that's where. Well, D.Va lacks a bit of value compared to a Winston Primal that obviously brings more sustain, more life to this fight. Dallas Fuel meters away from capping, and here's the recontest out of O2. And Search is already down. Not going to be able to get that rally online either, and I worry about Crosshead being able to get the CMP too. O2 Flash just haven't had a good stop since it felt like they were forced to fight when they were pushed off that high ground and Protect led that charge. That was the only kind of signs of life we saw to O2. Well, here's where O2 Blast can really start to make a difference on the defense. Protect is going to be going over to the Ramatra. This has been a bit of a signature pick coming out from their match versus the Guangzhou charge, and it's really where they start to thrive. Maybe this is going to be better for them, especially when you take a look at the Ramatra and the Winston in this third point. Brawl is favored here. Well, great timing on the EMP from Profit as Fuel jumped in and they even get hit by the hack. Either way, Hunpin has the HP to clearly survive, but it's more use on the counter. Dive and in the back killing Bliss. MCD seems healthy and Hanbin has backed away to try to reconnect with him. But this is the first time we've had a stop from O2. So with the timing that Dallas will have, I don't think they're too worried. That's a lot of time. And they also have an EMP. Edison has been able to convert those EMPs over to so much value. But oh, is what Sparkle's gonna take out to who are you too? Yeah, Edison is such free reign now. Yeah, this is an EMP moment from Edison. They're gonna, Fuel are gonna try to draw them in to this open area. And there is the EMP, Profit and Surge hit Karu. He's gonna Nano Surge just for that sustain, who has the rally if he wants the Profit to look for the sun. Won't even need it, conserves that, but is that a risk? Bliss rally, MCD Nano onto Hanbin. This is a lot of investment from the Fuel, and O2 just took too long to use the rally, took too long to make a decision if they were really safe or not, and the only thing O2 to Blast can depend on is the respawn advantage that they have. Oh, here you're just playing Ring Around the Rosie right now, and it's gonna be a full-on bouquet for Dallas Fuel. We have the reinforcements for O2 Blast coming out, but they're walking into the loving arms of Sparkle. Reaper better do some work if you're who are you. This is an insult to Hanbin and Hanbin only, but O2 Blast can't even breathe. Who are you? Doesn't know whether to fall back and help us support, try to get some space back. And Dallas Fuel lock in a two minute and 23 time bank. An improvement, a high score, as you should say, from the minute 42 that they capped yesterday against Poker Face. Woof. Uh, oof. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, it, uh, that's a lot of time to work with. Even if O2 Blast is able to get the first capture or even a full capture of this map, you need to do it with any amount of time. And 
that might be a call ask for them, just even looking at how Hanbin has been able to lock down these teams. It's been rough. Dallas Fuel, though, they know when they can push their momentum, when they can tempo engage. They're just constantly pushing, pushing, pushing. That's why you and I just weren't even sure when there was a fight or not. There wasn't that moment, uh, a break for O2 to really assess, stabilize. It was just always something happening. And when you're always calming, like, oh, this person's here, this person's low, and you don't have time to take a second to fight or to plan your ults, to plan how you're going to take the next engagement, I'm sure that's a lot of panic in the O2 Blast camp. Yeah. Well, O2 Blast needs to get some amount of setup, and if you do have that aggressive push coming out from Dallas Fuel, they can't do that. They they just simply can't, and when you want the D.Va to be able to be in a prime position on the high ground to be able to dive onto a target, it just simply isn't possible. You have to deal with peeling more for your backline versus setting up those dives. So we're going to end up seeing O2 Blast come out of the gates here with the Rumatra right away. Profit on a signature pick of the Hanzo. Going to be able to work with all of these long straightaways and hopefully get those storm burst down. Ooh, who are you just dashed into an anti though, but this is so nostalgic for me because Who Are You was like one of his signature heroes back in the day of like your fusion university and, and stuff like that. And now it synergizes well with the Ana of Haru. Maybe the Nano Blade can be that guaranteed win condition, but uh, Search Blizz could not find any shelter in time except the Karu and MCD. No, MCD is gone too, but this has been a much more aggro push by someone like Who Are You, which I'm sure feels more confident on this hero, but Sparkle finds the 2K to equalize things as though two blasts seem like the only survivors. Protect was able to throw some hands. That's gotta feel really good, just being able to kind of punch Sparkle in the face after being such a menace in the back line. It should be a quick capture for them. Dallas Field don't want to push onto the point and stagger themselves. They just want to be able to wait on this high ground for O2 Blast to be able to round this corner or even just stop them as those gates open. Where where was Profit? Where did where did Hompin come from? <laughs> Profit's probably climbing over the wall just thinking he's chilling, and Hanbin is right there farming him, and maybe Prophet missed his climb back up. That's the only thing I could think of, because often Hanzo should not be the dying this early, but I can understand Protect on the Ramasha not having any vertical mobility to go and make the space for him up there. And if you're Who Are You, you can't deflect all of that Tesla cannon damage coming down for the Winston either with the Genji. So it can definitely be difficult to try to protect Prophet in those situations. But don't go up to the front line, man. You know this. Oh, the double flankers of fuel, though, are looking at Karu. He's hacked. Search has been able to protect him well. So being able to ward away those double flankers, now, now that they're recalled out or translocated out, that's the moment that O2 Blast needs to tempo engage. But I guess as they do, they walk into a three man EMP from Madison. Only cost profit. Search thinks this is so winnable in a 4v5. I don't disagree with the call, but he needs to heal. Who are you? And just could not deliver the pass in time. Now the Annihilation used by Protect to, well, protect the rest of his team, and that just did not work out with the solo healer of Karu. And O2 Blast will have to reset. Big smart. It's going to be a big stagger here on Protect as well. Look at this pincer onto the Ramatra. Okay, he's barely able to get away, but that's still a very difficult position for O2 Blast to be in now. They have to be able to get this Nano Blade online. This is what they've been playing for this entire push. And they're just now getting it, Jen. That's not great. They're running out of time. Uh, it took a while, so this better pay off. But uh, maybe in the next fight, because this is the same situation where Fuel don't let them set up. They're constantly taking these preemptive dives. We're usually dive teams on the defense. Don't dive this piece. This is confidence exuding from the Dallas crew, where I'm surprised Hanbin didn't just pop Primal now just to flex on him, which they ended up going way too deep and eventually losing. So now the two blasts, they got gifted a fight. Hanbin is definitely not in a position to go for the Ego Primal here. O2 Blast is still putting up a heck of a fight. Want to be able to save that to be able to close out this map and get to that match point. So you don't want to throw away such a valuable ultimate, especially when you have to play around the high ground now. So Hanbin would really love to be able to have that online when O2 Blast is trying to take control of that high ground. 
where he needs to make the call on the Nano, but at what point? Nano, now for who are you? The Dragon Blade slices down Bliss, has to deal with a chunky and angry Hanbin Primal. So a one kill for two ultimates is what O2 Blast has to They climb back up to the high ground, still getting denied by Hanbin. Now at half health, that take from Fuel has disengaged. Now O2 Blast has Prophet set up on the Hanzo. He needs to be kept safe. If he could deliver some lucky headshots that can maybe give O2 Blast an edge. And Prophet's giving Hanbin a hard time here as well. You got the Storp with the EMP for behind! It's just when O2 Blast think they're safe. They're getting EMPs. They're getting dove on by a Winston. It's just... I'm surprised Prophet wants to play Hanzo into this. I, I would expect a swap. Literally anything. Even a Sombra. They can't dive you if you're invisible. <laughs> No, no, yeah, I mean, just kind of sneak into the back line there. If they can't see you, uh, then you're doing something well, or maybe that's just a drunk rat thing we haven't seen in a long time. But this is kind of another chance here for O2 Blast to get into this. Looks like they're going to be straying away from the Genji here, so who are you is going to switch over to the Tracer. This was a great look for O2 Blast yesterday, but you got to protect Prophet here. So just doing an amazing job of that. The rally stun put enough fear into Hanbin where that nano just scared O2 Blast and get killed and really do much. Protect drops down to Mega just in time. O2 Blast can't afford to lose anyone. They only have one minute. It's already time to make disadvantage. Pulse into the back, at least a bit of splash damage. As O2 Blast tried to go through this castle side, they're so huddled around Prophet to protect him. Almost got the headshot onto Edison. He's able to translocate out in time. But while that's over, it's missing. Becca? Who are you? Almost Ooh. pushed it to the end. Hanbin is aware. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I mean, oh, who are you still there right now? Dance around the point. If he ends up being able to stall long enough in the back line, now he still gets pulled away. Maybe O2 Blast are able to sink that in for the second point. I think I just saw who are you recall in the distance, and Sparkle has now marked him. No C9s in Dallas Fuel's page. They will not let the Necro curse come true. <laughs> but if Dallas Fuel keep diving in that deep, I like the call out of who are you. The creativity is there, but the execution simply better out of the Dallas Fuel. It's Ten a seconds. nano dive one, it's an EMP next, and eight seconds left from O2 Blast. Big panic swaps here for O2 Blast Prophet going over to the Widowmaker, hoping to grapple over, but that might do it here. Overtime is triggered, but how do O2 Blast get there? Well, without who are you, not gonna happen. Dallas feels stone cold in the cameras, confidence exuding. Once again, Eichenwald is their map. You don't want to ever go there again. It's match point for Dallas Fuel. Dallas Fuel are able to get a dominant victory on it yesterday. And so to be able to continue that here solidifies I can vault as a great map for them into this map pool. Heading into this next one, I don't like this for O2 Blast either. It's Gibraltar. Jen, how do they make it through Gibraltar, a classic dive map? It's gotta be up to protect. It's you gotta see O2 Blast make these con these decisive calls. It felt like it took a while to generate the nano blade, took a while to execute it. Only got one kill at the end. Who are you needs to step up? He's been he's been competing for years and he needs to show it and show up for O2 Blast. Cause it's match point for the Dallas Fuel. And after this break, we'll find out if it's a sweet.
match point for the Dallas Fuel and one map away from so far having a very flawless summer stage, already starting off 1-0, but 0-2 Blast, I guess if it's the name, 0-1, and if they don't come up with something, it's gonna be 0-2. Living up to their namesake, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that until you actually said that out loud, that that was something that might actually come to fruition. Uh, sadly, too, because O2 Blast, they have such a long legacy as a team and a lot of these players as well, looking for that opportunity to prove themselves to be another part of that graduating class that O2 Blast is so well known for as a team franchise. But it's just such tough going. They played the Guangzhou Charge earlier this weekend. That was a super tough dive matchup for them. And Dallas Fuel is not a different story. I'm not going to be a Dallas hater, okay? I, I'm simply putting a question into existence. I have Dallas merch, okay? So hear me out. <laughs> Dallas Fuel, though, they're going to potentially be up 2-0, but it's against contenders teams. We haven't seen Dallas Fuel against OWL teams, I believe, right? So it's how do they stack up? Yes, they're talking about those improvements. They look amazing. But what about teams that technically at their level that have the experience levels that compare to theirs that's, that's what's a great left point. to be figured out that's such a great point you nailed it there dallas ended up beating poker face yesterday but i feel like where we can really see a great litmus test of their strength is when you end up having them go against these teams that have phenomenal sombras and while edison is able to put up these impressive numbers being able to also get some really great conversion with the emps you have a lot of other teams that can play slippery in the back line and i feel like one of those that you really have to take a look out for is honestly just like hangzhou spark and how they played yesterday and even just taking a look at seoul dynasty they didn't look half bad either with Krillin and Lee Sumin being able to protect each other. Absolutely. And Edison improving his hero pool, having more variants in that department, I think gives Dallas Fuel some more chances to conform to the different metas. Because there was one point where Dallas Fuel were so good at that Zarya Rush meta, then when it came to Dive, that was hot and cold when Fearless had to have more starting time. And Dallas Fuel have had these hot and cold um, moments depending on the meta. And if they mm -hmm. can be flexible, if they can just execute nonstop on these uh, variable compositions and have Edison be able to fit that flex role perfectly, then Dallas Fuel could be your next champion. But we'll have to see how they stack up against Overwatch League competition. But for now, they go follows against contenders teams. I'm very happy for them. Me too. This is a great start to their stage. We talked about Edison being able to work on his flexibility. And earlier on, at the start of the season this year, Edison was sticking to the Reaper composition. We even ended up seeing a lot of Moira come out from this team, which a lot of the Western teams started to take note of and integrate into their own compositions that they bring out even in this stage but dallas fuel being able to lean a little bit more into the dive is a great sign for them they look very very strong on it right now like you said we'll have to wait and see how they're gonna fare up against some of these stronger dive teams as well that are left in the east but it's gibraltar it's a dive map O2 Blast have struggled on the dive so far. Don't want to play into the Winston Mirror. And while the D.Va on paper is a great Yuna. counter to the Winston, it hasn't been working out for Protect. And Protect has been playing a more Peel style of D.Va. Guess when his buttons are pushed enough, he's ready to engage. And they've had some successes around Protect leading that charge. But this is a cheeky place for Profit to be body shuttle to MCD. Almost read that play like a book, but he needs a headshot to get the assassination. MCD is now worried for his life with this widow. This defense is a great composition for them for O2 class. Profit is super well known for the Widowmaker as well. Just really love those sniper heroes. And if Profit is able to kind of stay set up here on the high ground, oh maybe not here, maybe not here. Go to blue box or something. I can't believe Prophet is alive. He dropped down to like two ticks. Great healing by Search and Karu, who 
Well, don't have a ton of experience on their own, right? Like 2021 was when Surge mm -hmm. started competing. Karu, this is probably his first and best and most successful sure roster he's been on. So there's a lot for them to learn, and I think they're keeping up with trying to help out these DPS of O2 Blast. But with the flank pressure, with the execution that Dallas Fuel is putting on, there's only so much that Surge and Karu can do. It's only a matter of time before Fuel kill them if there's not going to be any retaliation from O2. MCD has to go down, but not without a fight. That's a huge anti nade into the back line. That's gonna blow things wide open for Dallas Fuel to be able to get this first point. That's so fast. And the self-destruct from Prophet is just <laughs> getting dealt with by a Brigida. And that's once again a self-destruct that doesn't have much thought to it in terms of yes, if you were able to get back into Mag, then what? Um, and it's, it's gonna get denied time and time again against the double flankers anyway. Profit as well, switching back over to Lahanzo. This wasn't a look that totally impressed me on Eichenvalda, but I take it back. I take it back! I'm caster cursing this on purpose, right? <laughs> so Profit can pop off. Yeah, he had a few uh, body shots on Edison and allowed him to translocate out. That's why Edison had sub two deaths for 10 minutes. And now who are you is starting to step up on the Tracer. I was a fan of the Genji swap on Eichenwald and thought he looked better there. And now the Tracer can start to mirror what Sparkle is putting on. But for now, we on Ed EMP at the ready for Edison, not even needing it. The Nana was more than enough given there to Hanbin to take the fight for fuel. Just in case. Edison has had such a great time in the back line of O2 Blast as well. Despite the fact that Surge is going to have this rally online with the Brigida, he's down. Can't even get it online, but otherwise I think Edison would have beat him anyway. Yeah, Surge needs to be way more quick on his decisions to pop rally. I'd rather see one that's pop to maybe stun a tracer and have an attempt than one that's never popped at all and one that's dead. But Dallas Fuel close. Three meters to point B and Bliss is that kind of that second tank presenting himself as the rally and the EMP from Edison is O2 power in a corner to try to re-emerge to contest. That'll be all that O2 have been able to say on their defense as Fuel will stack up five minutes for point C. I give a lot of credit to Edison, Sparkle, and Hanbin. Want to give another shout out here to MCD. Those antis have been so clean onto O2 Blast, completely mitigating the uh, impact that Surge and Karu can have in this matchup. So while they are able to kind of contend with the best here, it's been tough if you're going to have your frontline anti. Prophet headshot Sparkle as he threw the pulse bomb, so it's a one-to-one -one trade. Prophet's mechanics slowly warming up, and that's what O2 needs him to hit. His body shots are just not going to be enough unless the target is already low, of course. And Fuel, if they realize that Prophet is a problem, they're going to jump on top of him. Dallas is over four minutes, entering into third point. While this point is typically defensively favored, Hanbin is making that a very difficult task to be able to get set up on this high ground. There's a lot of ultimates online here for O2 Blast, but Hanbin's gonna be in the back line already with the Nano to boot and a Primal. Hanbin is just jumping through the Dragon Strike. <laughs> He's such a chad. Beats down the uh, back line of O2 and with the assistance of Edison, of course. Protect. Um, I think 0 and 4 on self destruct when it comes to just getting back into mech. That's the, the most important part of the self destruct. You're not really expecting the kills out of that, but it's that second life. It's a it's a budget primal, if you will, and you all will not lacking in the time department. Search is nano. That sustain very much needed to anchor this defense for O2 blast. Search is only hack though is Dallas will set up for the final EMP and hits three of O2 blast. The profit swapping to the Ramatra was a good thought. But they just didn't have any real estate to get back. Dallas fuel cap with 309. That's so much time. O2 Blast didn't win a single team fight on the defense. Dallas just with a huge momentum swing heading into those final points of Gibraltar. And Edison just again being such a big factor in that. He doesn't even have to play sneaky with the EMP either. Sure, he's able to get into the back line and start to scout, but at the end of the day, he's just kind of sitting on point and letting the EMP rip.
I think Who Are You is trying his best. I think it's a tough ask for Who Are You to Ready. deal with MCD and Bliss who are protecting each other well. And then there's Sparkle who's in that equation as well. A tra one of Tracer's many goals is to mark the enemy Tracer. Sparkle did an amazing job of that on Eichenwald, making sure Who Are You can see nine with the many attempts he, has he tried on point B. And Sparkle hits his pulse bombs. Who are you? Hit a few oh, pulse God. bombs too. So his presence is definitely there. Prophet warmed up his mechanics. Got two headshots that try to even up some fights for O2. But like you said, it's just um, the Winston that you wish O2 Blast were able to play, I think, would make a huge difference here. I want to call out some of the bright spots, though, from O2 Blast. I feel like it's a very unfair fight for them. Just taking a look at this <laughs> matchup versus right Dallas now. Fuel. And. Oh, so plus we're actually able to hold their own quite well versus Guangzhou Charge yesterday. Still struggled in the dive versus dive, but we ended up seeing some big pop-off moments for O2 Blast. Unfortunately, not going to start out this way as they come out of the spawn room doors, but Prophet is able to get set up here. I'm hopeful that we will end up seeing some big impact from the Widowmaker or maybe even Hanzo coming back out. Uh, I like the ideas of Protect, though, to go up on that bridge, try and knock these Dallas Fuel members from the low ground, find those isolations, but Fuel, they hog that corner of the door so they never got knocked back down, so Protect said, okay, well, I'm gonna push the cart and make them come to me. Well, now, you summon the party! Protect is getting hacked and ran after by the Dallas Fuel, where now that O2 Blast, these DPS have the, the space, the attention is not on them, they needed to deliver damage, and now that Prophet was even just set up looking to throw down some arrows. Dallas will turn their heads and well took Prophet's head off. One, two, three, go. It's as easy as that. <laughs> we heard it from Dallas themselves that these dives are easy to be initiated because of just how great the communication is. And that's why I feel like it is such an unfair comparison for O2 Blast when you've got Dallas being able to jump so cleanly on the EMPs, the Antis. Ah, the coordination, it's, it's just so clean. Yeah, when it came to like teams like Charge, you really much preferred the Tracer, uh, the Tracer Hanzo. You had Jimmy on the Hanzo, where it was like pretty much every fight you would get a first blood from that Hanzo. But that's a lot of teams that the Hanzo has the position far away from the dive so that he has space and time to go for those shots. And mechanically, if you're always getting jumped on, it's it's hard to land headshots with a BP tank in your face. So I don't fault Prophet too much. He's a very stressful situation. Prophet's doing his best to command the attention. And he needs to be pocketed. He'll have to self-destruct as a second life. Who are you? Barely gets out. And Dallas Fuel ready to take that space right back. It's a primal to toss Prophet off the side. Good readjustment on the juggle. This will nullify the nano. So many hops. And Hotbit is able to get back. He's on his Joker arc. I saw him laughing and smiling in the camps before, but he's laser focused when he needs to be fuel. They're looking like they're gonna full hold this. With a minute and 20 left. O2 Blast throwing as many ultimates as they can. The self destruct is gone. The rally got used there. Nano as well onto Prophet wasn't able to convert over into any kills. And while you're gonna have the Dragon Strike and the Tracer Pulse Bomb, this just might be one fight and done. Edison's gonna have another EMP. Bliss with the sustain of the rally. Dallas having the perfect answers to be able to deal with O2 Blast can throw at them. I'm surprised O2 Blast don't fall back to that Reaper. They swap at the end of point C. I can vault. And this, although I I would hate Reaper on attack here, if Dallas were constantly taking the initiative and jumping on top of you, then maybe the Reaper would do more than a dead Hanzo. There's so many ideas O2 Blast are going to have to experiment over the days in this EMP. Finds profit in Who Are You? Actually, Who Are You wins the 1v1 against Sparkle, down to like sub 30 HP. And I know that Who Are You plays with so much heart. I've watched him over the years do so. Starting from 14 all the way to 21. Who Are You has a lot of passion for this game. With 11 seconds left though, that's pretty much gonna be all she wrote. No one can get out of spawn either. Touch the spawn room doors has been activated. We saw Prophet get a chance to sneak out of the spawn here, but it's a quick cleanup as Sparkle and Edison handle that beautifully. Oh, look at Hobbin's smirk. He's laughing while asleep. 
Dallasul, I, I like that they can see the, why they fell in love in this game in the first place, why they stick together as a roster. They enjoy each other's company. They destroy the competition. They go next. Addison maybe doesn't crack a smile too much, but <laughs> the Dallas Fuel should definitely be proud of that 3-0 over O2 Blast. And for the O2 boys, gotta go back and think. And this is a roster that swapped their composition so many times, and I didn't see as much of that on a map like Eichenwald, where they definitely could have experimented. I would hope to see a little bit more experimentation in the future, maybe against some of the other contenders teams. O2 Blast can play around with those compositions just a bit more. They're still, again, some bright spots there. Protect kind of starting to really figure out who to peel for. Had to focus a little bit more on that towards the end of the series, but it did start to look a little bit better. There was a remake that ended up working, and Sergeant Karu. They were able to end up bolstering up that backline as much as they could, but Edison and Sparkle were huge, huge problems, and the impact they had was felt, and I think a lot of the other teams in the East are going to be fearful of having to face the Dallas Fuel. Fans in the crowd, just another day at the office for Dallas Fuel, and able to show up for them, watching them play in, in action. Great to see that it's it's a good year to be a Dallas Fuel fan. They'll take this 3-0, they'll go 2-0, they'll be flawless in the summer stage so far, where their next match, let's see, it'll be against the Shanghai Dragons. But finally, Sparkle gets his time in the spotlight. He's got the player of the match after getting cheated out of it yesterday by FCT. <laughs> he was tweet how much he wanted this and well-deserved. Oh yeah, Sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. Yesterday was tough. I think MCD absolutely deserved to get the player of the match as well. Sparkle right up there. It was a huge and very difficult choice to have to make between those two players. But Sparkle on the Tracer, constantly marking down who are you today on the Tracer as well. Getting so many picks in the back line of the Brigitte and the Ana and Search and Karu. And just constantly giving Protect a hard time, forcing Protect to have to peel so much for the back line. And Sparkle having the plan of swapping to Echo when they expected her to come out. Dallas Hood didn't even have to swap off the dive, where it is very popular to play the Ramatra Rush on uh, Oasis University. But when they realized that, well, if we play really mobile heroes like the Winston, Sombra, the Tracer, then, well, they can't Maywall it. Because Sparkle went to the Echo and just decimated Protect on the Ramatra. Sticky bombs were too much for him to handle. That made a huge difference, along with his Tracer. He's at least one feet toing the support. And I don't blame Searcher Fire Rewards for developing as players, but Sparkle is a menace. Oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like we saw Sparkle ablaze with the new on-fire changes more often than not. Every single time he was coming up in the kill team. Yeah, look at that! Ablaze! Every single time. I, that speaks volumes, I feel like, to how much Sparkle put into this match. Yeah, you don't have to talk trash. You just have to lock Echo, dupe the person you want to talk trash to, and beat them and the rest of the team. Sparkle... You know, when you stay on the same team as your tank, it synergizes so well with Hanbin, always on the same page with their guys. And that's the most difficult part of a double flanker execution. You're just a second off on when you're blinking in with your Winston or what you're up to with your Sombra, or reacting to hacks. It can all fall apart. There are teams that are going to be a lot better at punishing what Dallas you are up to. So that's going to be the big question for their season. Who is going to be able to punish you? Synergy, comfort, those play a huge role in how a lot of these teams are able to operate. And when you are playing a dive composition in such a dive-centric meta, you need to be able to have that communication and trust in your teammates. So Sparkle and Edison, that dynamic duo sticking together. I love the Hanbin callout as well. And you can see from even just eliminations, oh my god. 29 per 10? <laughs> That's disgusting. Dallas Fuel have a, have a nice schedule starting, right? Two contenders teams. They got the Shanghai Dragons, who 
back in the spring stage with the bottom of the leaderboard. Then they got Dreamers. That's on July 23rd. That's the most enticing Dallas Jewel match for me to watch. And of course, seeing if Shanghai Dragons can put up a fight too. They've had a good start so far. But Sparkle, the way he's developed as a player, especially having a super solid tracer, is important in this meta. And if Sparkle can keep up this mm -hmm. kind of performance, Dallas Jewel have to be on everyone's radar. They will be after that Dreamers matchup for, for sure. But after that, the going gets tough. Their next match after that one is going to be against the Soul Infernal. And that is going to be the hardest opponent for them this entire stage. If they can get a win there, I'm feeling really good about Dallas Fuel's chances to make the East proud at the playoffs. Their schedule is like a video game. It just goes up in levels. They got Shanghai then Dreamers, then Seoul, then Guangzhou. It just gets harder and harder yeah. and harder. So Fuel may look good at the start of the season. They have a great start, but how do they finish? And this, no matter what happens, this is all for seeding. But of course, being able to avoid the toughest teams going to knockouts is what the seeding is all about. But also, beyond the seeding, I want to know how good these teams are before we go to knockouts. I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't either. I, I don't want to speak too early about how these teams are going to fare for the rest of the stage because we still have multiple weeks of qualifiers. And especially when you look at us playing in sort of a round robin format, Dallas Fuel are going to play everybody except for one team. That's the same with all the East teams. But yeah, you want that seeding. You don't want to end up in the same bracket as Seoul, to be fair. Yeah, Seoul and Guangzhou have their own thing going on of who is the number one team. They're facing off while Spark are just looming in the shadows. Like, they don't know we're the we're really the number one team. And Dallas Fuel have been, like, working out in the next room saying we're actually the number one team, but nobody knows. Mm -hmm. So Apex competition has gotten so, so, so tight. It's been amazing to see how everyone's taking that break between either knockouts or midseason, depending on where they ended up, and taking that large break and turning into a whole different team. Sometimes picking up players, sometimes dropping players, and in the case of Dallas Fuel, keeping this core, talking to each other, and you can improve on that core. You can. MCD and Bliss, that's been the biggest view of improvement for me when it comes down to this Dallas Fuel roster and how they did in the first stage versus this one. MCD and Bliss have been able to keep each other alive so well that you wouldn't think that Dallas Fuel had dro like dropped their two, like the two best supports in the league. Chiu and Fielder, that was a tough backline for anybody to deal with. They ended up going over to the Atlanta Reign, joining the Western region, and that left Dallas with a kind of a few holes to have to fill here. But MCD and Bliss now, Filling those beautifully. I. Everyone was wondering, was Dallas still going to make any roster changes? Were they going to pick up mm -hmm. somebody to replace Fearless? Was Hanbin going to be enough? Because some metas, he was the star. Some metas, it was Fearless. And a lot of teams have opted for that solo tank where we've even heard from people like Dante and others, where that is so much weight on your shoulder, especially if you're an off tank, having to learn main tanks like Winston. It's... It's a lot, and I feel like Hanbin is handling that well. We Even you and I talked about, is Hanbin going to be a good enough Winston for the Dallas Fuel to be a number one team? And so far, it's yeah. pretty good. It looks way better, absolutely. And that's something that every single member of the Dallas Fuels had to work on. They only have five players that can't make any substitutions, so it's just going to be the five of them rolling into every single match, every single map. And so that flexibility is going to be so valuable. And there's been a ton of improvement across the board as you look at the first stage to the second. Definitely can feel that. And uh, the Overtalk podcast is almost over, y'all. We're, we're actually preparing an interview with Sparkle where I remember MCD mentioning that the least composed person on the team, in a good way, is Sparkle, who loves to celebrate, run around, and freak out no matter <laughs> no matter the match. And MCD's like, who cares? Like, sometimes these matches aren't as important as others. So MCD's like, you know, another day at the office. Sparkle's probably having a party. You guys have probably seen the gifts of Sparkle dance. I'm sure he's having one of those. We're trying to rally him towards the interview room, though. <laughs> Hard to wrangle when you have so much energy and excitement. And I love that attitude, though, to still be able to celebrate any win, whether you thought it was easy, whether you thought it was expected. 
And especially when you weren't expecting to get that win in the first place. You, you gotta love those moments, and you have to love playing this game. And I love watching these players play this game, especially when they're enjoying themselves as much as they are. <laughs> and I, You know, O2 Blash, <laughs> yeah, he, he had a Joker arc smile going on there. It was almost scary how much he enjoyed beating O2 Blast like that. And on their side, we didn't have their cameras, but... Uh, at least some of them, they kind of had their heads held down. And I think this is, they're, I'm sure just the opportunity to join a brand like O2 Blast who have created success. No one starts successful. You don't, you're not just born that way. You grow into that stardom. And I think for a lot of these O2 Blast players, whether they were on big teams or whether this is their first big team, this is just the first step to redemption or to the next chapter. Gotta wait and see whether or not Dallas Fuel can get the back-to-back. -back. It was rare. No one was expecting that coming out from the San Francisco Shock. But this time around, maybe we get a chance to see that two-peat happen. And I am so looking forward to seeing Dallas Fuel's development for the rest of the stage. But O2 Blast as well. It's been tough going for them. They literally just put this roster together. It's a lot to expect them to show up the way that they ended up showing up in the East stockouts with the players that ended up graduating into the Overwatch League and getting picked up for all of our teams in East or West. We still have a lot of great moments to be able to see out of O2 Blast. And I am a believer that as they move forward into the stage, they will end up doing better and better. Of course, and O2 Blast, when it comes to their schedule, if you're an O2 Blast fan, it's going to be a tough road. They got Soul Infernal on July 22nd, so next week, then the Soul Dynasty. Ooh, that's going to be good profit going up against this former team. Ah, the, the, Maybe the some narrative. insider knowledge the there? The drama. The drama. The drama. <laughs> yes, uh, I just have the, the schedule page pulled up. So, but yeah, that's Soul Infernal, Soul Dynasty dreamers and then what i feel like is winnable is panthera at the end. finally we have sparkle sat down let's, oh, let's uh, hear from oh, yeah, how that goes. Yeah, yeah. congrats on your win today how do you feel Oh, Oti Blast was strong oh, in spring stage, summer stage, not so much. It was a pretty easy one. So we've seen a lot of improvements on the team. What happened during the break? So finally, Winston is viable on our team. And my tracer is out of this world right now. Oh, uh, well, on about the future, we're going to show and prove, so I, I won't say a lot about that. Uh, so about your Tracer, you think uh, you're out of this world right now? Of course, my Tracer is out of this world. <laughs> 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 How many wins are you uh, anticipating this? So, I don't know about how many wins we're going to get, but I want to win against the Inferno. I'm going to get revenge. So, we're getting delayed a little bit, so uh, we'll wrap it up with the last message to the fans. So summer stage is going to be different, so please keep your support. And this is going to be the end of the interview. Back to you, Jen. Thank you so much, Unknown. Thank you so much. Uh, Ego out of Sparkle, but well-deserved. His first <laughs> popped off today, Rose. Absolutely. That play of the match, definitely well-deserved there. Definitely well-deserved yesterday as well, even though it kind of got yoinked away. But I cannot wait for this next match. 6-0 weekend for Dallas Fuel at the number one seed. But who can contend against them is the sole infernal in their shadow. They're going up against Poker Face. Bring towards to a break. You won't want to miss this next match.